Hello. For the next three or four videos, I'm going to show you my latest project, an aquaponics garden. Most of my videos are about wind generators, and I hope to be able to incorporate wind generators in my system to power all the essential equipment, but that will come later. In this video, I'm going to start with how I constructed the basic elements of this garden. You may notice some of the video was taken at different times of this project. As I have worked with this system, I have gone back and made changes. So as I show you this video, I'm putting all the elements of my system in the order you would need if you were going to construct it yourself. I'm by no means an expert in any of these things, and like most of you, just trying to learn about techniques that can make our lives better. The one thing I know for sure is none of these things are very easy. Even with all the information on the internet, there's still a steep learning curve. There are so many variables from climate, temperature of water, altitude, type of plants, type of fish, but that's all part of the fun, figuring this stuff out. So let's get started. Okay, all the elements in my uh, system here are going to be made from scratch. So uh, I'm starting with the tank, which I'm putting in the corner of my garden. And I'm using just regular cinder blocks, laying out a, uh, the shape that I want. And um, framing it out, getting ready to uh, pour the concrete. I used a thin uh, laminated uh, cardboard uh, product for the, uh, for the edging so that I can make the curves. And um, once I got my shape, I mix up the concrete, mix it up by hand, and uh, I start with the outside rim. As you can see, I just uh, I fill in all the concrete blocks, and I level it out with the top of the uh, of the forms. And I have these uh, PVC caps that I put screws in, and these are going to be later for my little fence. I, I have a, a fence to keep uh, kids from being able to fall into the pond. Um, I just take these and um, put them into the concrete, and they'll be nice and secure when, uh, when the system dries. These are half inch uh, PVC. Okay, here it is all installed. I removed the dirt, so I have a ledge because I'm going to put rocks underneath this front edge here. Now I, uh, I shape the dirt inside, so everything slopes down to one, one uh, side, one end, and this is where I'm going to put a drain. Now, I don't have that here. This is part of what I was telling you earlier. Um, I'm going to show you a picture here of, of a drain that I installed. Originally, I was going to just put the pump here at the end, and then I decided that was a bad idea. Uh, Plus, I needed a, a swirl filter, which I didn't realize at the time. So, here's the drain installed. It goes to another 30-gallon um, uh, plastic container. And at the bottom of this plastic container, I have it sloped down like a funnel. And there's a one-inch line at the very center that comes up around the side. So, as all the debris goes to the bottom, you can vacuum it out with a vacuum cleaner. And it'll a wet-dry vac, and it'll suck it right all right, this is how I connected the um, PVC to the wall. I just took a couple of scrap pieces of half-inch pipe, epoxied screws in it, and I screwed this into, into the wall. And then I stuck the uh, T-fitting onto that, glued it on. So that's how I secured it to the wall. And then the rest of it's just simple uh, T-fittings, half-inch pipe, and uh, I run it around to each one of the, uh, the holes that are in the concrete. And this is how I made the... Uh, the frame for my fence. All right, next I started the construction of the uh, legs for the uh, boxes for the planters. And what I did was I, I inserted these screws in the wall to keep these planters from being able to uh, eventually tilt sideways. So these I made some simple uh, forms. Um, and this is, this is showing me uh, install the um, the wedge anchors and some screws. Again, this keeps the, uh, once I pour the concrete onto these forms, these forms are only about four inches wide, and this just keeps them from being able to uh, tilt over from one side or to the other. Secures it, uh, secures the uh, concrete to the wall. Here's the form being put in place. I get these things uh, leveled. What I did was I drew a, uh, a pencil mark all the way across the wall to uh, that was level and then I line these up and I just filled these boxes with concrete um, 
the base of these are a little bit wider than the top and give it a little bit of a, a footing. I ended up putting a three on both sides to support the boxes. Here they are uh, after it's been poured, remove the uh, forms. And here's the other side. All right, this is how I built the boxes. It's just out of uh, one by 10 wood, just a rectangle box. I, I built each one to fit each side. Um, and I used uh, the same material for the bottoms. And then I uh, thoroughly painted uh, inside and out. And here they are. Now what I needed to do is uh, prepare the gravel. And what I did was I bought, uh, I bought some small gravel and uh, washed it thoroughly. And I made a screen, uh, you can see here, it's just a, a piece of wire screen that I uh, pour some gravel on and then wash it real good with uh, water and then dump it out. Now the reason you do this is, uh, you do this right now is because what I'm lining the boxes with is two layers of six millimeter um, plastic. Um, you know, if you can get pond liner, I'm sh that's a lot better, but it's just what you can get. Where I'm at, it's hard to get anything like that. And what you do is before you staple any of this in, you pour the gravel in first. That way, it stretches it and forms it to the box. You know, if you, if you try to uh, attach the um, edges first, you could pull that out and rip the plastic. So what you do is you go ahead and install the gravel. Um, and then you go ahead and, and then what I did was I folded it over the edge and then stapled it. All right, now I'm going to show you how I installed the uh, fittings that exit the, uh, the box. Now I'm showing you on a scrap piece of wood because I actually had to do this on the box from underneath and uh, it'd be difficult to uh, video this. And the reason is because I had to install the gravel and the plastic and all these things before I could drill the hole to make sure that it was installed properly. So this is just the technique I used on the box. Um, and I'm just doing it this way to show you how I was able to, uh, to do it using just regular PVC fittings. It would be better again to use um, bulkhead fittings, uh, but I was unable to find them where I'm at, so this is the way I did it. Um, I, recessed, I had to recess the wood a little bit so that the two pieces would screw together. And um, this is how I did that. I used a uh, one inch male and one inch female PVC uh, fitting and they just screw together like this. Alright, this is just showing uh, what I had to do to actually install them in the box. All right, this is me actually installing the, uh, the fittings into the box. I made sure everything was dry, and I didn't cut the hole big. I just made an X where the hole exits this plastic, and then I put a bunch of 100% uh, silicone on this, and then, um, and then stuck it through the bottom of the box. and then from the other side uh, thread it on the, uh, the other coupling. Okay, in my system I decided to use bell siphons instead of a timer to, uh, to control the water cycling in my, uh, my tank. So uh, what I'm building right now is the rock guard. The outer, this is the outer shell of the, uh, the bell siphon and I just use my saw to cut slits in it 
and I did this on three sides and I'm using a three inch PVC and uh, this is this is uh, at the very bottom I uh, I just used this um, Dremel and so this lets all the water uh, enter from the gravel so now I'm able to backfill the whole uh, the whole thing here it is looking straight down and then now this is the standpipe this is just a one inch standpipe and I will uh, I'll talk about it later on on how to uh, to measure that and get that right but uh, here it is installed and then I used a two inch PVC with a cap and this is the top of the bell and again I'll go into more detail on another video of, uh, of how to tune this thing up and get it to work right and then a cap so there's my bell uh, installed okay what I decided to do is on the uh, return line from the uh, bell siphon I um, I'm gonna make a uh, solar heater on the pipe so to help uh, warm up the water as it returns back to the uh, to the fish tank and what I did I just used some regular water bottles um, the ends of the cap fit perfectly over a half inch uh, pipe and uh, so anyway I was able to use what I did was I split the one inch uh, pipe that exits the uh, bottom of the box and uh, made a little manifold that splits it into two half inch pieces of uh, pipe and I painted them black to help absorb the heat and then I was able to slide the bottles they fit almost perfectly over the pipe these bottles and I just uh, ran them end to end and the idea is that it will uh, you know collect some of the, the heat from the sun and uh, help warm it up now of course dealing with fish you don't want to do anything too extreme so you know this system was a very very gradual heating of the water because it only he heated the water as it exited the uh, system and during the day it did bring it up to a couple of degrees probably five or six degrees um, over a long period of time I used an inch and a half PVC pipe for the drain and that runs over to my 30 gallon plastic container and this is the system complete I have a concrete top with a rock on it keep kids from being able to get into it and I used a uh, Tupperware container for the filter housing the pump fits inside of it and everything is is uh, these these connections here are just pressed together they're pretty tight and this whole system fits into the inch and a half uh, hole at the bottom and you can see I just use some um, these are like scrubby pads I use for the filters and I have two inch holes that I drilled in the four sides that these things cover and the pump just draws the water through these these pieces as a filter and at the bottom you'll see um, well you can see the water swirling right now so it just slowly swirls and then all the sediment drops down to the bottom and then if I wanted to vacuum this out I would just sweep the uh, debris into the middle and the little one inch hose, um, PVC cap on the, on the side I remove that and use a uh, wet dry vac and vacuum out the uh, sediment from the bottom the whole thing just fits right back in one of the reasons I used this system the way I did by having the pump near the top here not only does it it allow for the sediment to fall to the bottom and it draws the clean water from the top but also if there was a leak in any of my lines uh, the pump would only draw down six inches and it wouldn't empty my pond all the way out killing all the fish so that's one of the reasons I uh, I designed it the way I did and I just snapped the uh, cover back on and uh, this little thermometer I have in there the water when uh, when it's totally full it'll it covers this thing completely and then there's the top all right that, okay the last thing I did was drill a uh, overflow hole and this just keeps anything from uh, from over flooding the uh, the pond and here are the dimensions